I'm Shelby Gibson, and I'm the program director here at the Paluxy River Children's Advocacy Center. And I'm Lena Langford. I'm the clinical director here at the Paluxy River Children's Advocacy Center. And we are going to talk to you today about proper words, proper names for private parts, and boundaries. Shelby? Okay, so using the correct anatomical name for all parts of the body helps your child build a positive body image and opens the door for honest and open dialogue with you on any questions they might have about their bodies. Words like penis and vagina are not bad words and having the right language and context help kids communicate clearly about their bodies. When we avoid saying words, we instill a sense of shame or that it's something to be avoided or hidden. Let me share with you two examples of children making outcries to trusted adults. The first one is, my uncle wanted me to share my cookie. The second one is, my brother kept putting his butt in my face. Both of these children are making outcries of sexual abuse. However, refer to her vagina as a cookie and to her brother's penis as a butt. You can see how these two outcries could very easily be overlooked or ignored. It's important for them to use the correct terminology so that if something happens to them, they can communicate it clearly to an adult that can help them. If you and your children have already started using nicknames for genitals, don't feel like you have to stick to those. Children need to know, not only need to know the names of their private parts, but the boundaries that they and others must respect in regards to those parts. If you've never talked about private parts in your family, you won't be able to communicate those boundaries. Educating children now helps them know the difference between what is okay and what is not okay. So, Shelby mentioned boundaries. Um, and talking to your kids about proper names for their private parts is also the, a great opportunity to talk to them about boundaries. And that way you can achieve two goals with one step. So, the boundary conversation is about, one, about letting them know that it is okay to say no. It is okay to say no to an adult or even another child who wants to touch them in a way that they might feel uncomfortable about. So this applies to private parts and just their body as a whole. So in regards to private parts, you can let them know that their private parts are not for sharing, um, that there may be times when a safe adult might need to touch their private parts while examining them or bathing them. It should never feel uncomfortable. And if they ever feel uncomfortable or the adult tries to tell them to keep it a secret, that is when they need to tell. And it is okay to tell a safe adult. In regards to their body as a whole, um, it's, it's better to let children decide when and with whom to share hugs and kisses. Um, whenever kids are forced to give hugs or kisses, say, to a family member, then it can kind of send the message to them that you are not the boss of your body and you don't get to decide when to share your body. And that can make them more vulnerable to people who might want to harm them. So those are the basics on proper names for body for private parts and boundaries. If you have questions or you want more information, um, we are including our resources, um, books, um, websites with more information included below so you can check that out or you can always call up to the center um, if you have specific questions.